You're the manager. I'm the manager. Well, you know, I'd like to know some of the guys' names on the team, so when I meet them on the street or in the ballpark, I'll be able to say hello to those people. Why, sure, I'll introduce you to the boys. They give them funny names, though, Lou. Oh, I know they get those ball players off for funny names. Let's see, on the team we have uh, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. You the manager? Yes. You know the guy's name? I should. Well, then tell me the guy's name. I say who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. You the manager? And then go yes. You know the guy's name? I'm telling you their name. Well, who's on first? Yeah. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first. Who? The guy playing first base. Who? The guy on first. Who is on first? What are you asking me for? I'm asking you. <laughs> I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. You ain't telling me nothing. I'm asking you who's on first. That's it. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first base. That's his name. That's whose name? Yeah. Well, go ahead and tell me. That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yeah. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who is on first? What are you asking me? <laughs> I'm asking you who's on first. That's it. Well, go ahead and come. Who? Why did so few people see that? Because they were told to see a collapse, maybe? There's three main things that keep people from seeing what's going on. Problem solving skills, group think, you know, peer pressure, and that they're terrified by the implications. We're going to just focus on the problem solving aspect. If I tell you, the answer is 27. Am I right? Well, um, what's, what's the question? What's the problem I'm solving? If you don't know the problem, how do you, how do you know if the answer is right or wrong? You first have to define a problem before you can solve it. And it can be referred to as a syntax error because the order matters. Like when doing this math, are you adding those numbers together first or multiplying these first? You'll end up with a different answer depending on how you group them. The same thing with crime solving or with problem solving. The order matters. So if you start out with a theory, you know, we have thermite or we have bombs or we have airplanes or whatever theory someone has, and they, they take their pick from this list of things, and then they go cherry picking and searching for the data that's going to support their theory. So in essence, in essence, what they've done is determine the problem. But what happens if it was something else that they didn't take into consideration? They'll never get to the right answer. And that actually is one of the key things you get people arguing about guesses about uh, assumptions about what the problem is, and they never look at the problem. <laughs> if you don't look at the problem, you can't solve it. So what they're using is a theory to determine what happened. That's, that's the wrong direction. We have to start out with what happened. You collect data, and the data always tells you what happened. And from that, you determine how it happened. But only after you, you first establish what happened can you determine how it happened. If you don't know what it is, you can't determine how it happened. For example, look at these beams falling with dust trailing behind them, opaque dust. Let's say you're going to um, impersonate one of those beams. So you cover yourself with dust and jump off the top of the building. From the ground up, would someone see that dust trailing off of you? No. You need more dust. Okay, let's say you get a couple of armloads of flour and eject it out as you're falling. Can you impersonate this? No, no that's opaque dust. It, it originally, it initially blocked out all of the sunlight. 100% of the sunlight, so it was pitch black. It's very dense dust. And you come to the realization that these pieces of material are becoming dust. They're frothing up into dust as they fall. And they didn't hit the ground. But if you didn't know that uh, these turned to dust, and you start out with an assumption, you wouldn't get to the right answer because do you know of anything that could turn a building to dust in midair? Something 
turn it to dust in midair. So it's important to first determine what happened, then how it happened, and only then who did it or why they did it. In times of change, particularly great change, traditionally people have retreated to areas of their past which they remember feeling safe and comfortable in. This is a natural thing. Or is it? From here we'll begin to explore. Let's imagine for a moment that you and your partner have just ended a long-standing relationship. You find yourself pitted with the challenge of, what do I do now, surging through your mind. For many, the belief is, while it may have only taken a moment to begin such a relationship, the longer it's present in your life, the harder and more complicated things are to end it. Now through all my years I've come to the understanding, as have others, that there are two paths we travel in this type of situation. The first is what we have been taught, while the other is everything else. When I say to people that life is very simple, many times they reply with, How can you say that, Dave? There's so much going on and all you can say is that? Well, in a word, yeah. Something that people are growing to understand has a lot to do with being human. If I asked you to bake a cake for me, just a simple one, and I supplied all the ingredients, gave you access to all the tools you'd need, as well as the kitchen space, basically everything that you'd need to fulfill this task, could you do it? And if so, in your mind, why? And if not, why? As you probably noticed, I mentioned nothing about a recipe. Admittedly, a deliberate thing on my behalf, because part of what makes you human is the nature of things. You know full well, whether a beginner or veteran baker, the recipe is your blueprint that aids you to complete the process as best you can. It's what guides you, you might say, so that no matter how it turns out, at least you can say that you follow the instructions, right? Well, the same can be said with this thing we call life. You merely need to choose to either follow what you're taught and told, or consider more closely for yourself what may be needed. Let's imagine this for a moment. You go to the window and take note of what's going on outside and around you. You see the breezes blowing with, and this rustles the leaves of the trees, while the children are out in the street playing ball. You then return to your seat and let this sit with you for a while. Now please consider this. Could you tell me with all honesty that what you just witnessed provides a truthful representation of what is going on elsewhere in the world? Why? Isn't that what most people do? A kind of, I can't see it happening in front of me, so it obviously is not something I need to pay attention to and take seriously sort of approach? Carl Jung once said that the most damaging act any human can perform is to pretend they don't see what's happening around them. In the same statement, he also said that this very act is also the primary factor that ultimately leads to a human's demise, both for themselves and for all others. For through this choice, they set the benchmark of what is acceptable, meanwhile maintaining no accountability or responsibility for the boundaries to be constantly tested and therefore adjusted, ending, unfortunately, in the fall of one's very understanding of being human. Now you may not have any conscious memory of a time where people treated each other well. However, this world and this thing we call life each offer a different arrangement of priorities and a way of understanding these priorities where they either work with everything else or against it. So just because you were never taught it growing up or in school has no bearing on its relevance and importance to your life. And it is through this that we move to the next part. For the everyday person looking to come to terms with this and to understand the world they live in, the first thing to identify is the boundaries that we set up to protect us from harm. And through this I'll do my best to shed some light on it. Let's imagine you wake one morning and rise out of bed to greet the day. You enter the kitchen where you make a cup of tea or coffee. You turn on the morning show you usually watch while waking of a morning and find them reporting of a young boy and girl who have been killed in a car accident. In the pit of your gut you feel the churn of pain and loss come over you. 
but in an instant, they subside. You try and take a deep breath before taking a sip of your drink, only to be faced with another wave of heartache and despair for the parents. For as you acknowledge that the loss of any child at such a young age actually wrenches at the very fibre of your being. You put down your cup and slouch back in the chair. You arc your head back and take another deep breath. And all at once, this question rises to the surface of your mind, asking, what has the world come to? And immediately after this, you turn the TV off. What would you consider from your experience here to be natural? Is it possible that the everyday person would in fact consider each and every reaction they experienced here to be normal? Even the final one when you turn the report off, obviously because you don't wish to hear any more. Now without getting technical here, this as well as to continue to watch but have no reaction to any of what you were watching are what people consider to be normal responses. However, the very initial responses you experienced are in fact very natural. Think long and hard about this, okay? You could say we've just two separate experiences. One natural and the other man-made. One allows for your real contemplation to occur while the other seeks only to uphold that safe position. But please allow me to be honest here. There's absolutely nothing safe and protective about this. For the protective mechanism to kick in, there needs to be a specific understanding sparked first. Unfortunately for the greater majority of us as humans, we live in a world and age where it is designed to generate and regenerate what we call a hypersensitive idea of protection, or in other words, going overboard in terms of being protective. And this is based in the root of fear. On top of this, over 90% of interaction we have with the world each day occurs without our knowledge or conscious understanding. And this creates a constant state of stress overprotective reactions, along with a sense of independence and individuality that's heavily based on our opinions, our judgments, prejudice and bias. And that's towards ourselves as well as others. And it's very rarely based on anything substantial. So now ask yourself, after learning of this, what is natural and what is man-made? What is natural and what is conditioned? Is a person's desensitized approach to watching the news, for instance, a natural thing, or is it something that took many years of training and exposure to develop? When I speak of this with people, there's usually mixed reactions around the room. But to be clear here, to have little or no reaction or response at all to such things is neither natural or healthy. If we look more closely, the basis of all of it is reflecting back to us a very real and honest view of ourselves. Firstly, there is our individual path commonly referred to as one's personal path or journey in life. And then there's something else, a part of us that holds the key to greater things, a part of us that anyone can approach with a healthy mindset. And secondly, what do we really understand, for real I mean, about the world we live in? Why for example morals, ethics, values, integrity, maturity and overall intelligence are so far behind the learning curve up against our technologically advanceable awareness. Why the very things that sicken us, betray us, stifle our growth, pit us against each other like animals in a ring, have all continued and do continue, either out in the open or behind closed doors. I'm going to finish with a quote from a famous man named Albert Einstein, who once said, The sickness of one is the betrayal of another. And you know what? It seems he may have been aware of more than we give credit for. Kurt! This will make run faster. This? How? A 
surviving throne is a dead throne, while a wise, understanding and useful throne lives forever. Survive or live. To survive is to know and understand little, and react to most things according to outside influences. While to live means you know and understand yourself, as well as you can, as well as appreciate each response before it happens. Thus the capability to go beyond. This world has become a smeltering pot to some degree for reactions, and this breeds families and lifestyles that depict the inner life of a child who has a family but is a stranger to them. This has been the growing legacy of previous generations. And from this, you can understand that all the wars and corruption are just symptoms. I shall not force you to look down the barrel of your demons, but I will ask you to name them. For through this, may the process begin. May the upper and lower begin. The nature of survival is a temporary thing. Until such time as what was wronged can be set right. Unfortunately, many just want their paycheck yet pretend they don't care. I know this to be different and I think you do too. Your very existence is not an accident, irrespective of what the initial circumstances of your conception were. Each living being has the right to life. You've always been more, you've just never realized the self-revealing and therefore the offering that is proposed each and every day for you to come to this conclusion. For each life offers this to itself and to its mirror other. Things in life can change, they can. And it need not be through violence, for violence is nothing but pain. To survive one only needs to do what they feel they need to do for the next of anything to be the same. Have a look at your spare time, free time, and any other time, whether in the shower, on the toilet, walking somewhere, running, lying down, eating, drinking, any form of this where you can link your thoughts with other things. I'm here to tell you as one to another that I carry no stick or rod of force of telling you, quote unquote, this is the way to do things. That how you choose to live your life or not is up to you. All I ask is that you consider something that you were never taught, but needs your attention. For if not for any reason whatsoever other than just to be open to yourself. For whether you can measure what I speak of here or not at this point matters little right now. All I ask is to ask the very same question you feel in the pit of your gut, perhaps something you've always felt to be there. Many will be convinced of their own folly. However. When standing at Bell's Gate, this is your decision. The apparent measure of our kind is of an unfinished book, with a spacious offering for more to be added. Survive, and those who offer this can only ever mirror its offering, while live and life can grant the pearls of so many other elements. Now granted, it may seem like I speak in riddles here, but it's important for your ears and mind to hear these words. But this is not just something to fix up your situation so you can be on your way trying to have a life. How can you possibly get on with your life if you do not understand certain things first? Through the act of survival we humans minimize our own opportunities and so the opportunities of others. We fleece the things and people we care about to fill a hole in us that just never will be filled in this way. We deflect, we distract and we deter only to find that this road we've set ourselves on leads to nowhere. Like I said, survival is a temporary measure before correction of what needs to be attended to can take place. When we humans live, boy do we live, we get to show our true real colors and they can achieve so much. Living is for the living while surviving can never be anything but your stepping stone. Your personal view right through to your world view portrays this through you. Survive or live. The real difference is a choice. A choice along with a measure. A measure of you. For to survive brings no joy, no peace, and definitely no success in any life venture. For any human, no matter what their beginnings, 
can have a keen sense of understanding this. gonna get away with this yeah and what are you gonna do huh what are you gonna do about it you're out of it pal you're on your own <laughs> <laughs> 